Out on the water in light winds, race nine begins. <coughs> ten crews, ten identical yachts. One sole ambition, to be the first to arrive in Panama unscathed. For Durban 2010 and beyond, this is their first competitive race with their new mast. Skipper Ricky Chalmers and the crew are keen to get back into the swing, but the forecasts for wind are looking bleak. It's tomorrow at the same time. It looks like very, very light winds from tomorrow onwards. Um, so it's trying to figure out where best to place ourselves to make any sort of boat speed in those light winds. Opting to stay close to the coast, the team hoist and drop different sail combinations for hours. But there's no use, the wind has gone. About 50 miles off the uh, Mexican coast, and as you can see, in zero wind. Absolutely nothing. It's a frustrating time for the South African team. No sooner are they back racing with the fleet, than the fleet leaves them behind again. Currently in ninth position. Ninth position is the lowest we've been since uh, the start of the race, so it's a bit disappointing. The team that for much of the race has led must bide their time for now. Up ahead and further out to sea, the crew of Uniquely Singapore are making steady progress down the Mexican coast. But there's a surprise in store. There was a little rib coming towards us with six Mexican marines, I suppose, on board. It's an unexpected visit, but for the crews of the Clipper race, nothing is too bizarre. I need to had a good look round our boat, spoke to the skipper. We all had to identify ourselves with our passports, so the guys who were still sleeping got woken up. <laughs> morning, Dad. Uh, morning again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the routine patrol check for the Mexican Navy. We didn't go through too much, just uh, board in, check our papers, and then uh, on their way. Really. Nice people, nice chaps. Gave a few t-shirts and a few uh, visors. Take those back, one for yourself and one for your captain. That's all we've got spare, so sorry about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pecking order. Uh, you can have a hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank okay. you. There you go. Thank, nice you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's it's pleasure. Pleasure. No, it's a pleasure. The visit by the Marines provides some light relief from the routine of ocean racing. And a reminder that even in the middle of the ocean, you're never truly alone. Mixed conditions greet the boats on their 3,100 mile journey south, but the crews of the 10 international yachts press on, making best use of the wind they find on the way. Sail combinations change as regularly as the team's watch system, and mile upon mile, the 68 foot racing yachts dive south towards the finish line in Panama. For the everyday folk who've left their lives behind for a year to sail around the world, this is the challenge of a lifetime. And three weeks after leaving the Californian playground of Santa Cruz behind, the fleet reaches the mouth of the Panama Canal. Hull and Humber pick up first place in race nine, yet another win for the team from the east of England. But as the boats tie up and wait for their passage, one member of the Clipper fleet is saying goodbye for good. Um, I'm, I'm leaving the Clipper race. Um, I haven't been feeling too good. Um, it's feeling really low energy, um, very, very tired, and very, very weak. Five years ago, 21-year-old Dan Monk was diagnosed with leukemia. A few years later, he relapsed again. It's a battle he's been fighting ever since. And I've never, ever let my illness beat me in any way. But you got to be sensible about it. And it may be really hard to make the decision to get off, which it was. So be it. It's got to be done. You can't win all the time. It's amazing how, how long it takes for your body to recover. Um, and mentally you feel really well, but physically you just, you just haven't got it. Dan's come a long way since stepping onto the Clipper yachts seven months ago. But the challenge is extreme, and it's taken its toll. 
and it's tough. It's very tough. And you know, you, you think saying around the world is going to be really hard, but actually experiencing it with a crew, you realise how hard it is. This is the end of Dan's clipper adventure. For the rest of the fleet, the journey continues. And though the next stage isn't powered by the forces of nature, it's nevertheless a moment of great excitement, the colossal Panama Canal. This is absolutely awesome. This is just the most special thing to be going through here and see this uh, amazing feat. I think it was built nearly 100 years ago. You can see it just swirling up as it comes in through the channels underneath. Oh, I think this is just fantastic. This is a real highlight for me. The Panama Canal is a miracle of engineering. Connecting the Pacific to the Atlantic and taking a full day to negotiate, this huge, man-made wonder cuts the Americas in half. For the crews of the Clipper Race, it's yet another unique moment on this once-in-a-lifetime experience.